Hey everybody, and welcome back to lesson five of our six lessons of home tennis. Now, my name is Ashley News, and I'm here at the Avenue Tennis Club in Havant. This week, we're going to be working on your rallying skills, which is where it gets really exciting because rallying is what the pros do when they're playing in matches. And next lesson, we're gonna be looking at how to play a match. So first of all, what is rallying? Now, rallying is where you hit a ball back and forth with another player if you're playing singles. If you're playing doubles, you're be hitting the ball back and forth with three other players where we have two against two. Now when we play proper tennis we're playing on a big tennis court like I'm standing on here and we play over a tennis net and what we need to do is try and get our tennis ball to go all the way over the net to the other side so that our opponents can hit it back to us. So rallying is very very important if we want to win tennis matches. Now in today's session when we practice our rallying skills we're going to be in a smaller space which is going to be great for us because it's going to help us with our soft touch and our control and that's what some of the best tennis players in the world have compared to other players. They have the ability to hit the ball really hard and really slowly. So in today's session we're going to be working on the control side. So before we get into it we need to make sure that we've got the equipment we need for the rest of the session. So the first thing that you're going to need is a tennis racket or something that you could use instead of a tennis racket. Now it could be your hand or if you've got something like a chocolate lid or a hard back book, something that you'll be able to hit a ball with, then that will be great as well. As well as your tennis racket, you will need a ball of some kind. So I'm gonna be using this ball today. If you've got a tennis ball, that's amazing. But a ball that bounces is gonna be really, really helpful today. If you don't have a ball in the house, you can scrunch some paper or some tissue paper into a ball, or like we have in the previous sessions, you can use some socks. The final thing you need is going to be four markers. So I'm using four cone markers here, as you can see. You could use jumpers, you could use socks, anything that you've got in the house that's not gonna break, okay? So we want something that you're not gonna break, but we need four of them to mark out our space. And make sure you bring a drink along with you because we're gonna get thirsty during the session. So just like before, you've got one minute to have a hunt around your house for all of those things. Your time starts now, off we go. Done, everybody you've got 10 seconds left to find those items remember just like we said before don't worry if there's some items that you can't find you can use your imagination using your hand in these things is absolutely fine well done and stop there so just before we get started, make sure you've checked with your grown-ups that you're allowed to use the pieces of item that you're using and make sure that you've got a nice area, a nice space ready to set up your equipment. We don't want that space to be near anything like televisions or windows or lights because we don't want to break anything, but it doesn't need to be a big space. Somewhere small is fine. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your four markers and we're going to have a very quick warm-up. Now this warm-up is going to help us to warm up all of our muscles in our body, but also our brain, which is super important when it comes to playing tennis and other sports. So with your four markers, your job is to place them down in a nice line. You're going to put one, big step, two, big step, three, and four. So we've got our four markers there. So make sure you do that for me now. Excellent. Now, once you've got your four markers down, we're going to start on marker number one, and you're going to start in your ready position that we've practiced before. Now remember, the ready position is nice and low with our feet shoulder width apart and our hands out in front of us. So we're standing behind cone number one in our ready position. Now, if I shout two, you're going to sidestep and stand behind cone number two. If I shout three, 
you're going to go to three, and four, you're going to go to four. And one is gonna be all the way back to the start. But remember, we learned this in lesson one, when we play tennis, we want to be facing towards our opponent all of the time. You're gonna be facing towards your screen so that you can see me at all times. Let's have a little practice run. Are we ready? Ready position, three. One, do those ready steps in between each one. Four, one, three, two, three, one, three, two, four, and rest. Well done, everybody. Right, so that's your practice run. This time round, I'm going to give you a number, but after you've gone to that number, you must return to cone number one or jumper number one, whatever you've put down on the floor. So I'm gonna shout two, three or four and you've always gotta get back to your ready position behind cone number one. Ready? Three. Perfect, ready steps. Four. One. Oh, we're already on one, that was a trick, wasn't it? Two. Two, three, and rest. Excellent. I'm a bit out of breath. How are you feeling? If you're not out of breath, that means you're much fitter than I am. That's not a surprise, is it? Okay, so next level. Now that we've got to grips with this drill, you need to practice your forehands when you get to the given number cone. So if I shout three, this is what it will look like. Your side step to number three, your swing with your favorite hand, and then you'll go back to number one. Let's do that again, three. So remember we finish right over our shoulder with our elbow in front, and then we get back to number one again. Four. Excellent. Now, if you want to do this really well, when you get to your cone, let's look at number four, I want you to step forwards over the cone before you swing and then side step back. Let's try that again. Number four, so we side step, step over the cone, swing and recover back. Two. Excellent, recover back. Three. Step over the cone, swing, recover back. Three. Amazing. Four, big one. Step over the cone, excellent and recover back. Okay, let's switch it. We're gonna switch the numbers around now. So this one is now number one, two, three, and four. And we're going to practice our backhand. So this is with two hands, isn't it? So ready position, three. Step over the cone with two hands. Excellent, recover back. Two, swing, excellent. Four. Don't forget to finish with that elbow up nice and high. Two. Always getting back to cone number one. Three. Three. And rest, amazing. Final exercise before we use our ball. Now, final one. We're gonna stand right in the middle of all of our cones, okay? This time round, I'm going to call two things. I'm going to call out a number and a shot. So, we're gonna go back to our first numbers. One two, three, and four. If I shout out number one, and I shout out backhand, you're going to do a backhand with two hands, okay? Remember, a backhand is two hands. Then we get back to the middle. If I shout four, and forehand, I'm gonna to go to number four, and I'm going to swing with one hand, because that's my forehand. Okay, let's have a practice. Three, backhand. Three, backhand. Excellent, this is really tricky. This is where the brain training comes in. Let's go for one backhand. One backhand, amazing. Four backhand. Oh, this one's a tricky one. All the way over here, turn and recover. Three forehand. That's right in front of us. Good. Three backhand. Turn the other way, two hands, good. We'll do a few more. Two forehand. One forehand, finish right over your shoulder. One backhand, 
Excellent, and last one for forehand. Back to the middle, amazing. Give yourselves a pat on the back. That was superb. Now, that's one of the toughest warm-ups we've done. In fact, I think it is the toughest warm-up we've done so far. The reason we did it that tough is because you've been smashing it in the last few weeks. I wanted to see how far we could go and how challenging we can make it, but you did superb. So let's grab a quick drink there. Really, really well done. Amazing, right, so we'll pop our drink down and we're now going to grab our ball. So if you've got a tennis ball or a football, whatever ball you've got, pick that up and we're gonna walk over to our markers. Now this time round, we're going to make our markers into a square shape. So we're gonna have a, a very small tennis court. Okay, so as you can see here, I've made a nice square like so. Now remember, a rally is where two players hit the ball back and forth together. Now, we are doing these exercises on our own, so we're going to be practicing self rallies, which you'll remember from one of the previous sessions. But we want to make it challenging for you, so we're gonna do a few tricky exercises to get you really, really working hard. So, first exercise. You're going to place the ball in the middle of your square and your job is to see if you can use your right hand to push the ball outside of the court. Then you're going to sidestep and use your left hand to push the ball outside the other side of the court. So we're gonna be hitting the ball back and forth like a rally using both of your hands. Have a go at that for a bit of a practice. Make sure we're sidestepping after each hit. Good, keep it up. See if you can keep your knees bent so we're nice and low. We're always watching the ball and we're always facing towards the screen so that we're sidestepping. Keep that up. We'll do another 10 seconds of practice. And stop there, well done. Right, mission number two. Now this is really tough and I don't even think I can do this one but we're gonna have a try, we're gonna try this one together. This is called a plank rally. Now a plank is an exercise that you can do that helps you to get really, really strong with your core, which is your stomach, your six pack, and your upper body, your shoulders and your arms as well. So this is fantastic for tennis players or if you want to get really, really strong. So we're going to go down into a press up position or a push up position. And what that looks like is my hands are on the floor my body is straight with my feet on the floor as well, okay? Now, if it's tricky to get into this position, you can do it with your knees on the floor instead of your feet on the floor, okay? So you can have your knees and your feet on the floor like so. And your job is to see if you can hit your ball from side to side. So you can do it on your knees or if you're really strong, you can do it on your feet and you've got to change from side to side. So have a go at this now. So we're having a rally on the floor in a really tough plank position. Off you go. That's it. If your arms start to shake, that's normal. I, I actually stood up and gave up because my arms start to shake, but you're not gonna give up. You're gonna keep going. And if your arms do start to shake, you can go down to your knees to make it a little bit easier. Okay, so let's carry on for a few more. Amazing. Okay, stop there. So that's your practice done. We're going to set a 30 second challenge to see how many hits you can do in that short amount of time. Let's see if you can do 10 hits. Okay, your time starts now. Off you go. Make sure you're counting. One, two, three, four. Keep it up, make sure you're counting. If the ball goes out of control, or your knees have to come down to the floor, that's okay, you can carry on your score. 10 seconds to go, keep it up. Keep counting. And stop there, well done. Right, shout at the screen, how many points did you get now? Fantastic, really, really good. It's a tough one, but we are on lesson five and we do want to make it tricky because that's how you're gonna get better, you're gonna get stronger, and you're gonna be ready to play real tennis on a real tennis court like this. Okay, 
Next challenge, we are still doing rallies, but this time we're going to introduce a bounce because when we play tennis, remember from a couple of weeks ago, we are allowed how many bounces? That's right, we're allowed one bounce before we hit our shot. And if you play wheelchair tennis, you're allowed two bounces, one, two, before you hit your shot. So this next self rally that we're going to do is going to involve a bounce and we're going to see if we can start outside of our court. And you've got to see if you can throw the ball up, get it to bounce inside your court and then catch it on the other side. So we're gonna throw it up, sidestep, catch it on the other side. Throw it up, sidestep. It's a bit windy for me out here. If you're indoors, it'll be much, much easier. Try again, throw it, bounce, catch. Good, throw it, bounce, catch. Have a little practice, off you go. So we're outside the court, the ball bounces inside the court and we sidestep to catch on the other side. This one's really tricky. Amazing work. Very good. If that's too tricky, you can stand inside the court and just practice your catching like this. Amazing. If you want to make it more challenging, you could see if you can catch it with one hand outside the court. That would be really tough. Have a go. Can I give you 15 more seconds to practice that one? Excellent. Watching the ball, make sure we're sidestepping all of the time. Good stuff. And stop there. Amazing. Right then, final challenge before we start using the racket. This time, we're going to do hand tap rallies. So, you're going to stand in your tennis court. You're going to drop your ball on the floor and using the palm of your hand, you're going to tap the ball upwards. So watch here, we're going to go bounce and tap. One, two. Every time the ball bounces in your court, you add a point to your score. But if it bounces outside of the court, it doesn't count. You've got to come back in and we're going to start the whole score again here. So we're seeing how many you can do in a row. If you only get two, one, two, and then the ball goes out of the square, then you can start again, but two is your record. So we're going to see how many you can get to. Okay, have a little practice first and we'll do the 30 second challenge. You can use one hand, you can change hands. If you want, you could use two hands, but your job is to keep the ball bouncing in your zone or in your mini tennis court. Awesome stuff. Watch the ball carefully. And remember, if you get yourself into a good ready position, you're a bit lower, that's gonna make it even easier for you to get a high score. Excellent. Couple more to practice. Amazing. Okay, are we ready then for the challenge? We got, we got 30 seconds to see how many we can get in a row. Now remember, if it goes outside of your square, you've got to go all the way back to zero. So this is gonna be mega, mega tough. A good score on this one, I think would be maybe three points. So let's see if you can beat three points. Okay, your 30 seconds starts now. Off we go. One. Oh, I missed it on the first one, so I've got to try again. One. Good, bending those knees, making sure that we're using our palm to push the ball upwards. And stop there. Excellent work, well done. Let me know how many did you get into your tennis court? Great scores, well done. Right, we're gonna grab a drink and then we're ready to get back with our tennis rackets, the fun bit. Have a quick drink first. Okay, hopefully you've had a little drink now and you're going to grab your racket or whatever you're using for your racket. It could be something like this, it could be your hand, whatever you've got, that's absolutely fine. But we're gonna use our racket and our ball and we're gonna head back into our tiny tennis court. Okay, so this challenge is called the one, two, three challenge. It's gonna start as the one, two, three challenge and then if you pass the test, we're gonna make it a bit more challenging for you. But this is what the one, two, three challenge looks like. Your job is to bounce the ball on the floor if you throw it on the floor, it's gonna be really tricky because the ball will bounce out of control. So we're looking for a nice drop on the floor like this, and you're going to gently use your racket face or your strings to tap the ball up 
We're going to try and keep it in our court, okay? One tap, and then we're going to catch it. And then we score one point. So let's watch this first. So this is number one. One tap, and then we're going to catch the ball. Now, if you manage to catch the ball, you're then going to go on to two taps. So here we go. We're going to drop the ball first. One tap, two tap, and catch. And then as the game suggests, one, two, three, we're now going to go for three taps. So drop the ball, one tap, two taps, three taps, and catch. If you manage to get three taps, then you can go for four, and then you can go for five and six and so on. And we're gonna see what your record can be. Now, it doesn't matter on this one if you lose control of the ball, if you drop it, if it goes rolls under the table somewhere else, that's absolutely fine. You can carry on from your score. You don't have to go back to zero. But if you manage to pass, one and catch, then you go to two. So have a go. Starting off with one bounce, one tap and a catch. Once you've managed to catch it after doing one tap, you're gonna try two taps. The key on this one is to make sure that you've got a nice ready position. So we want our knees bent so we're nice and low. We want to have our racket strings pointing up to the ceiling, like so, or up to the sky. And that way, the ball will stay under your control. If you've got a wonky racket, then the ball's going to fly into different directions. We don't want to hit the ball above our head because that's going to lose control. We don't want to hit the lights either, do we? So, see how many, how many have you got to so far? Well done if you've managed to get two or three. If you've done even more, that's amazing keeping score. We'll give you another minute on this one because this one is a really good one and if you can get a high score it's going to be really awesome. Good stuff. Amazing. So it's a good one for your counting skills. In a minute we're going to take it up a notch. Excellent. Don't worry if you're still on number one or number two. Keep practicing. When I was your age I couldn't even get past one. I've had years and years of practice at this and hopefully you guys will too. Excellent stuff, keep going. Very, very good. Hope you guys are enjoying your tennis. One day I'd love to see you come to this tennis club. Excellent stuff. Good, last couple then. Brilliant, hold your ball still. Really, really good. Give yourself a clap using your ball and your racket. Well done, okay. So now that you've done that, we're going to test your maths skills, okay? Now, the way we're going to test your maths skills, instead of playing the one, two, three game, we're going to use a number of your choice. So, what is your favorite times table? Now, my favorite times table is three. Talk me through the three times table. We've got one times three is three, two times three is six, three times three is nine, and so on. So, because we know that the three times table goes three, six, nine, and 12, that's how many taps I'm going to try to do. So, I'm going to start with three. So here we go, drop, one, two, three, and catch. What number am I going to try next? That's right, six. So this is more challenging because we've got to do a lot more hits. Here we go, one, two, three, tiny taps, four, five, six, and catch. And then I've got to do nine and then 12 and so on. Now this is incredibly difficult, not just for maths, but you've got to do more hits this time. So what I want you to do is choose a times table. Now, if you found the one, two, three game easy, then you could do a bigger times table. You might choose the five times table, for example. If you found the one, two, three game difficult, that's fine. You can do this next game using catches instead. So let's say if I choose the two times table, I could start by doing one, two catches, and then that's past the level. Then I'll go to four catches. One, two, three, four. And then what comes after two and four and six? That's right. So that's what you're going to do. Choose a times table. Have a go now. Off you go. So you can use your racket or you can use your hands to catch the ball. It's completely up to you. But we're going to give you two minutes to practice this game. Off you go. Excellent. Excellent. The key on this one is to watch the ball and to remember what score you got to. Good stuff. Make sure you're bending your knees. And if you can, try to keep the ball in, in your mini tennis court. 
If the ball goes out of your tennis court, you don't have to go back to zero. You can keep counting. Amazing. Good, I can see some of you have used the four times table. That's a good one. Excellent. And if you have to stay on the one, two, three game, that's absolutely fine. The more practice you get on that one, the better you're gonna get at it. You could become the world champion of the one, two, three game. Excellent stuff. We've got about a minute left. Let's see if we can get a nice score. Let's see if we can get past the two or past the three. And after this session, you could challenge your other family members to this game, see if they can beat you. Excellent stuff. If you've got an older sibling or your grown-ups, you could challenge them to do something like the nine times table. That would be really tricky, wouldn't it? Amazing stuff. Good, let's go for 30 more seconds. We're doing so well. After this 30 seconds, we've got our game, our challenge. Good, keep it up. Last few goes, let's go for 10 more seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop there. Well done, everybody. Give yourselves a nice pat on the back and we're gonna grab a very quick drinks break. Amazing. You guys have done so well. We've got one more session after this one, which is where we learn how to compete or how to play matches, which will be really, really fun. And after these six sessions, you will be so good when you get the chance to play on a proper tennis court like this. So far in the first five sessions, we've been playing on these courts here, these orange color courts, and they're called clay courts. Now, clay courts are really nice to play on because I don't know if you can see from there, but they've got like a sand on them. And the reason the clay courts are really cool is because when you play tennis, you can slide to the ball like this. Now, next session, in our last session, I'm gonna show you another surface that we play on here at the Avenue, and it's called artificial grass. We've got real grass courts, which are played on at Wimbledon, and we've also got artificial grass. So we're gonna show you those next week. Right then, let's get into our game. I'll stop chatting. So we're gonna head back over to our markers. But this time, you're going to set up your markers slightly differently. You're going to set up one, two, and three markers as targets, and you're going to set up one marker here to stand in your ready position on. And what we're going to practice is our accuracy, because like we say, when we rally, we need to be really good at aiming because we want to get the ball over the tennis net and into the court. So your challenge is this. You're going to be in a nice, solid, ready position with your ball in one hand and your racket in the other hand. And your job is to drop the ball, just like we did when we did the one, two, three game. And we're gonna use our racket strings to tap the ball to try to hit one of the cones. Okay, so let's have a go now. So we're gonna see if we can hit the cone. Oh, I was close, I missed it. So I'm gonna pick up my ball, I'm gonna go back to my cone again, and we're gonna try another one. Oh, so close. So off you go, we're gonna see if you can join me in trying to hit your cones. And if you manage to hit a cone, you're going to put it on your one. You might have jumpers, you might have socks, whatever target you've got in front of you, if you hit it, you're gonna bring it back to your home base. Here we go. Join me, that's it. I haven't hit any yet. Let's try another one. Yes, I managed to get one, so I'm gonna take mine back. Make sure you're doing it gently. We don't want your ball to be going through any windows or anything, so nice gentle taps. Hopefully your targets aren't too far away from you. Oh, I managed to get it on the second bounce. Keep going, well done. Oh, just missed it. And again. I've got one left. How many more have you got to get? Don't worry if you haven't got any yet, keep going. Remember, we're using our forehand here, aren't we? We're using our favorite hand to tap the ball to the target. We're gonna give you 30 more seconds to go. Let's see if we can get all of them. Bounce and tap. Oh, that one I hit was too hard, so I need to do it a bit smaller. Here we go again. Oh, 
Oh, so close. Last couple then. Yes, I managed to get it. Amazing. Now, if you haven't managed to get all of your targets yet, press pause on your TV or your phone or whatever you're using and carry on. And then once you've finished, click play again and come and join me. But well done, everybody. You absolutely smashed that session. And that was, I think, was one of the most fun sessions so far because we were actually hitting the ball and controlling it a bit like a proper tennis rally. Now, next lesson, like I said, we're gonna be practicing our competition or our match play. So we're gonna bring everything that we've learned all together. So just to recap, in our first session, we learned a bit about the basics and our basic movement, about always facing forwards. In the second session, we learned about the forehand. Third session, we did the backhand with two hands. Fourth session, we did the serve above our head, and today we did rallies. So next session, we're gonna bring all of that together. You guys did so well. I'm really, really proud of how you're doing so far, and I can't wait to see you in the next session. So remember, make sure you've got all your equipment ready for the last one, and I will see you there. Take care.